Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lettertainment podcast. Again, we have two guests today, Antonio and Helene from Italy. Um, they are in the leather and design world. Uh, Helene is a student in a design school in Italy, and Antonio is her teacher there. So we have, uh, we're going to talk about leather fashion, uh, being a designer, what it takes to be a leather designer, to get some news from the insiders over there. And we can start with Helene. Why don't you start, introduce yourself, and then we'll continue with Antonio's introduction. Now I'll get okay. to my questions. Uh, my name is Ludwig Soy. I'm 19 years old. I'm from Turkey, but I'm currently studying in Milan um, in product design area specifically. Uh, I've also studied abroad uh, many years in my life, like in Rome, Turkey, and Bosnia. Uh, and right now, I'm currently working more on the product design area, contributing to some logos of restaurants in the Milan district, uh, participating in some leather craftsmanship design ideas with Pegai also. And I'm hoping that um, I have one year uh, until I graduate, and I'm hoping to maybe open my own studio one day. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, we worked with Helen uh, in some of the designs at Pegai, and we can talk about that later too. Antonio, how about you? Let's get to know you. I'm fine. Thank you for this uh, lovely opportunity. Uh, introducing myself, uh, uh, I'm uh, an industrial product designer. Uh, I'm based in Milan. Um, I do this job uh, uh, in my own studio is uh, by now uh, 14 years. Uh, I mostly design furniture uh, with the job of the studio uh, for many clients. Uh, one of my main clients uh, is a, a leather factory, a leather goods producer, and uh, I design uh, most of the news uh, for them uh, in the last 10 years. And uh, thanks to this passion, uh, as a couple of years ago, I also started uh, with uh, my own uh, brand of, uh, of bags uh, with a, a particular attitude uh, um, related to, uh, to industrial design, okay? Not with a fashion touch, but with an industrial design touch. Then later I, I can show you what this means for me. Yeah, that would be perfect because I couldn't um, conceptualize it in my mind and it will help us if, if you guys can show some stuff um, to what that means. And um, okay. before I get into the questions I have here, how did you get into this design and leather space? It's always an interesting story. Is for me the question? Yes. Or, uh... Yeah, yeah, for, for okay. you. For, uh, well, uh, is a is a uh, long time ago uh, when I was at the university. Um, I I don't know exactly know why, but I was in love with the bags and backpacks. Okay, uh, I could see many friends of mine with lovely fashion backpacks uh, uh, from all over the world. Okay. And uh, the problem for me is that they were extremely expensive and they couldn't change so often. Uh, at a certain point, I decided that also thanks to the tools of the university, a lovely workshop, um, I had the possibility to experiment and realize many of them. Uh, a day I was out of the university to a craftsmanship that was uh, doing leather goods, but really, uh, a very small one, you know, behind the corner in the in a neighborhood of the city, and um, he, he he became my teacher in that field. After one year, he gave me for free the first sewing machine, okay, a, a very old one. I still remember a Pfaff brand. It was probably the beginning of the 60s, and now I don't have it anymore. But it was magic to me because I had the possibility to work by myself uh, in my small uh, uh, studio in a uh, in city and to prototype as much as possible. Uh, after that, uh, 
um, I had the possibility to know um, a client that is still my client uh, and uh, he was uh, in that moment uh, it was 2008 and uh, 9 mm. in that moment the market here in Italy was gonna ch was changing uh, quite a lot uh, the business uh, for them it was like goods for office uh, um, covered in leather something like that extremely colorful the collection and so on uh, in that moment uh, the chinese market was uh, destroying the the market of this company and they really didn't know what to do uh, so i was called uh, because i was a young designer probably quite cheap and um, the request was uh, is there a possibility to change uh, the market and to have uh, a different point of view but always using our style our production so i moved them into a field of uh, home accessories in leather and uh, uh, the first collection i did for them was uh, a collection of uh, baskets uh, with a specific uh, um, propose uh, the one to save uh, leather and money at the same time so i designed and i will show you later uh, a collection of uh, mm, many baskets but made in a modular way just using a single small piece of leather because uh, i remember the first day i was there i saw huge containers of leather small pieces and I was uh, really astonished about this and I was asking them, but why you trash? Because of course a book is quite big and after under a certain dimension is not uh, uh, possible to use it anymore. But uh, in that moment I decided, okay, I want to use uh, as much as I can the leather, even those trashy pieces to realize something unexpected. And so Thanks to this attitude, we created this uh, first collection. The collection then had a, a very big success uh, that we had to move uh, also from trashy leather to regional leather. Um, and after many years, uh, now the company is uh, extremely good, uh, is growing a lot because the, um, the market uh, we are uh, is extremely uh, positive as a response and uh, we are still working a lot in new collections okay that's that's great like it's yeah we all face that problem when you're making bigger goods the small droppings of the leather is too small for a lot of things you need to get creative or you're gonna waste that leather which is perfectly fine you just need to find proper designs and smaller patterns to make something out of it i think it's perfect unresponsible way of um, you know, not uh, losing that much uh, leather. I totally agree with you, but in fact, my first uh, mm, stupid question was, but why don't you use it, for example, for key holders? Uh, and they said, we cannot produce 1,000 key holders a month. Nobody's going to buy. Right. Uh, I mean, we, we, it is more expensive to produce something than trash it at a certain point. Okay. Yes, exactly. Unless you get really creative and make something unique out of it, then it turns into a value, for sure. I yeah. think it's also important uh, about the value that we give to the leather, because as we know, it's a really important material to work with, so that by not wasting any part of it can also be uh, an awareness for people, I think. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. very important Very important these days. Coach came up with a concept. They have a separate website for this. It's huge for them. Uh, they call it Coachtopia. They, you know, they're making huge production. I heard at their peak, they were making 50 million pieces of leather goods a year. So I, I yeah. imagine they produce a lot of those waste leather, uh, you know, the smaller pieces. So now they have a brand called Coachtopia they make designs putting them together you know smaller pieces like a checkerboard and things like that and make bags out of it so and especially today the consumer is very responsive to these sus sustainable practices not wasting anything creating value out of um, 
everything we can uh, instead of producing new materials. Um, they, they really respond well, so it's, it's great that um, some examples came out very early in this discussion. So okay. I'm going to start with the fashion history, fashion culture in Europe. Um, when I'm looking into all these big brands, um, the most expensive ones always has Paris underneath, you know, Louis Vuitton Paris, Hermes Paris, and, you know, even now the, the new upcoming fashion brands, Polen, they, they have to use Paris underneath. Um, what is the magic about France that, that has this luxurious fashion um, um, perception in, in all of us's mind and then demands those high prices, especially in, in leather? What do, you, uh, what do you think about that, Antonio? The secret of the French fashion brands regarding leather goods is that they produce in Italy. This is the reality. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not a joke. If you open uh, Celine and Vuitton, you open, there is written made in Italy. It's not a joke. I'm, uh, I'm serious. No, yeah, and... I know. I, I see most of them when I open them. Yes, there is a, there is a good portion of them made in Italy. There is a small, small portion made in France. And there is a growing portion of it made in Spain nowadays, which yeah. I absolutely love the craftsmanship, by the way, from Spain. So, yeah, I would like to hear Agreed. more about it, yeah. Well, the, the, the reason why, um, I mean, uh, the French are extremely able uh, to sell their own goods with that amazing price uh, because they don't sell goods, they sell uh, a, a dream, uh, uh, they sell you a word, uh, they sell you opportunities to look like something or someone, okay? That's the reason why uh, you spend that much, because you spend for something that is uh, uh, almost untouchable, okay? And the good, the bag, whatever, is just uh, a medium between you and the dream. 100%. Then, of course, uh, yeah, then of course, uh, the object itself uh, has to be done as best as possible. The reason why it's done in Italy is because historically, uh, Italy is full of districts of craftsmanship and tanneries. Okay, um, as you as you probably know, in Italy we have three big districts for the tanneries, uh, close to Vicenza another one in Tuscany and one in south of Naples. All of them with a specific uh, style of production, okay? Uh, and all around Italy, from north to south, especially in south, there is a, an attitude about the people in um, sewing, okay? Uh, still nowadays, many fashion brands produce in south Italy uh, because historically ladies uh, had the opportunity to, to sew uh, and to teach uh, uh, to, to other people how to do it. The same attitude nowadays uh, is in, uh, in, the, in the factories that produce leather goods with uh, uh, an amount of technology that is uh, incredibly, incredibly much higher than in the past. Uh, uh, this is something I can tell you because uh, since I began to do this job 14 years ago with leather uh, compared to the nowadays uh, aspect of the factory, uh, it's totally different. It, once it was uh, a big craftsmanship, now it's extremely technological. The cutting machineries, uh, uh, the technology to, to glue, uh, to refine the edges, uh, is totally different. Okay, and in, in a constant transformation, uh, the word of leather is uh, um, in a good health, I don't know how to say. Uh, people all around the world, uh, they always ask for new objects, new things uh, with a very high quality. In this moment, uh, the only possibility to survive is to, to stay for a leather factory, is to stay uh, at the top. Okay, nobody pays uh, a piece of leather few money. There is something wrong. If someone asks you something, uh, a cheap price, okay. Well, 
so in few words, there is a, uh, an amazing combination between the French uh, uh, attitude and the Italian craftsmanship. They, they, they found uh, halfway perfectly. Okay. That's the magic. That's the magic. I think um, so. I'm, I'm, my next question kind of dig deeper into that, but you said it perfectly. French is extremely talented at marketing and aspirational identity. People want to be, want to look like someone that you know they admire, and they are beautifully crafting that dream and loaded onto leather crafts because leather has been associated being a luxury. Uh, material thousands of years now right back in the day it was yeah. rare it was difficult to make and warriors and rich people were only able to get it and wear it so leather has this association in all of our minds in the history it's luxurious it's expensive so it's a perfect medium to load this aspirational identity the dream French is creating and put a high price tag on it and deliver it to people and there's a huge demand for it that's why they're very successful and Italian culture complements it perfectly with the craftsmanship because truly uh, every time I go to Italy I I get a different understanding of the the craftsmanship culture wherever I look I, I go stay at a Airbnb I look at the woodwork I look at the tiles I look at the you know the, the way they put the windows it's different these people take their time, you know, I, I can see they didn't rush through it. And craftsmanship absolutely requires this patience, which not all of us has, but I feel like Italians has abundance of patience and that kind of makes them good craftsmen. Is that true? Like, can you talk a little bit more about that craftsmanship culture of Italy? Uh, we, we are used to, uh... Uh, eye level so uh, we normally don't want to stay below that level okay especially if the price uh, uh, is not the cheap one we pretend the beauty around us and this is my luck and the luck of uh, some company I work with and the luck of my back brand because if you point uh, uh, very high then you have a good response the people uh, it's not stupid. The people understand where the good is and the reason why it's good. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, to me, uh, is not a secret. It's the, it's the best way uh, to work with leather. It's the only way to work with leather. Okay. And uh, regarding what you say, the leather is precious. To me, there is a, a specific uh, ancestral reason why leather is so precious because uh, it's a uh, uh, extremely durable and a timeless uh, object, I would say. Okay, the reason why the people uh, uh, spend so much is because a piece, a good made in leather, is durable. Then uh, I don't want to talk about uh, the seasonal uh, uh, approach of the of the fashion brand. They do fast the best fashion. that yeah, fast fashion. They do the best that could last much longer, but then, of course, for commercial reasons, they, they need to invent something new. This is, uh, my approach is exactly the opposite. It's a risk, of course, uh, but I, I, I'm not uh, strong, big, and I don't believe in that uh, uh, attitude. Okay. Absolutely, I agree because leather don't don't fit in that concept. I believe Elin might be able to know a little bit about my approach, very similar to that. I whenever we're working yeah. on some pegai designs, I always you know have this principle. I have two major principles. Leather is a timeless material, so it has to design has to match with it. It has to be a timeless design. You know, it's gonna look it be, great. Exactly. Shouldn't be right. a contemporary one, always universal, minimal, that can last very long as it should last the leather its own on its own. Absolutely. The design as well. And I always want to emphasize the beauty of leather in each of the designs. I always tell her, you know, the, the focal point of each piece has to be the leather, you know, not the logo, not the accessories, not the stitching line. Those are the, 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 
you know accompanying features but the bigger pieces of leather where the grain shines those are the two major things we keep discussing with Helen whenever uh, we're, yeah. we're working on a design exactly even the accessorizes that we made for the bags that are currently ex uh, on sale on etsy they are done with leather on its own even like the little things that can be attached to the strap of the crossbody bag they're all done with leather really high quality i'm really proud of it <laughs> yeah well me too thank you for the great work yeah uh, antonio i believe your brand is going to be reflecting of these um, like mindsets, probably the timeless designs, the, the beauty of leather. It seems like we are kind of on the same page uh, thinking leather doesn't fit into this, um, you know, fast fashion model, which is mm -hmm. naturally going towards where my questions were heading here. So uh, I was thinking, you know, Zara was crazy. You know, they were going so fast, very affordable fashion. You know, Zara was kind of like the inventor of fast fashion. And now yeah, there, is the, there is the sheen, right? It's even crazier. Like Zara cannot even come close to what they're doing in terms of speed and and affordability. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan on that fast fashion concept, but it is growing like crazy. What do you think? What do you guys think about fast fashion, especially like at the level of sheen? And um, how does leather fit into this model? Okay, so um, I'm going to kind of develop this answer in two ways, actually. So thinking my age right now and the current situation of the status and everything around the world, yeah, fast fashion is actually, um, I won't say it's really bad, but it's just really contemporary. And when we have um, a material just like leather, then I think, uh, like, I'm not against the fast fashion or anything, but when it comes to leather, I think it should be evaluated in a precise and different manner as all the process and the amount of effort that goes inside to create that hand leather. So, um, I mean, yeah, fast fashion is good, but not when it comes to leather, I think. It doesn't fit to leather. Mm -hmm. Hey, Antonio? Uh, uh, what, your question uh, reminds me something that my um, grandma, like many other grandmas all over Italy, uh, we used to say that uh, who spend more, spend less. Right. And this is uh, a way to invite uh, the people in uh, uh, invest their money into the quality because the quality lasts. So I'm not involved in the fast fashion. Mm, the first reason is probably because of my age. So uh, uh, I'm 40 years old. I'm not that used to uh, I mean, I cannot uh, almost remember the, the last time I, I've been to an H&M, for example. But mm, my choice is being precise. Uh, the, I, had, I had a moment in my life, uh, also because of my job, that I said, okay, I cannot uh, buy cheap things because uh, they are not done in the proper way, in the right way. There is no the, the amount of respect for the environment, for the material materials for the people that I pretend from my job itself. So I, I cannot be a sort of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I cannot have two faces. So I decided to buy less, uh, but with an higher quality. The things I have, they last longer. I, I'm talking about clothes, for example. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and about the leather in the, in the uh, fast fashion. It is simply impossible to, uh, they, they, they can live together, they can stay together, if the leather is the one produced in a proper way. For sure that, for example, Italian, but I would say European tanneries uh, cannot uh, fit in the fast fashion. The, the cost is too high. I know the cost uh, uh, per square meter. Right. There is no possibility. So or you use a, um, a, a fake leather, I would say fake leather, Mostly. or you use a leather that uh, is done uh, with the, the cost 
over the shoulders of the people. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, so, yeah, this is the reason why they, they really, to me, they cannot uh, uh, go together. Absolutely. I think um, for two reasons, because leather is a long lasting material, but fast fashion is designed not to be that way. So they don't go along and fast fashion needs to be cheap. And leather is not cheap. It, at least good, respectfully done leather is not cheap. So they cannot be used in this in, in this sense. I 100% agree. But I really love one thing you said. Um, you know the the price tags I see on those items they're creating in this you know Sheen website and stuff like that. How is it possible to make this in a responsible and ethical way to pay the people involved? You know who who designed this, who cut it, who sew it. Like, where, like, it doesn't even cover the shipping costs for some items that we see. Like, who is getting paid properly in this process? That's the biggest question in my mind. And for that reason, I'm really, like, I, I'm almost against it. I really cannot associate with it. Probably I'm, I'm at the same generation with you. I don't relate to it that much. Maybe that's why I'm easier to uh, make come to this judgment. But it, it's difficult. Uh I would like to say something in this one. <laughs> um, I think um, our generation, at least, we're really um, attracted to the things, the goods that we see as luxury items or like, as we said, fast fashion. It's really good. Yeah, you don't get quality, but um, when it comes to affordability and like you just buy things to throw them away after a month. When we're dealing with leather, I don't think this is possible. Like, we shouldn't do this. Also because, yeah, like, for all the reasons that we're talking. So, um, as I said before, like, fast fashion, in my opinion, is um, not as bad, but only when it's combined with leather, like, at least real leather, that makes it. And it's not even possible, as you said, to have that quality, have that effort, um, it just doesn't even match the price, as you Absolutely. said. Absolutely. And one question here about more of the generation, your generation, Helene. So there is a huge uh, crowd or, or sentiment in the Gen Z. You know, things need to be ethical, sustainable, you know, uh, responsible. And then this is, this is the out loud uh, idea coming across. But then we see these fast fashion brands thriving, growing like crazy, uh, again, supported by the same co like customer base who is saying we need to be sustainable and environmental. Is it a contradictory you know, uh, ideology and then practice in, in difference? Um, I mean, as a product designer, yeah, this issue in the world, like worldwide, this is a really big problem. But um, I think this can be really uh, changed. For example, we have brands that kind of recycle things. There's um, a brand called Mod Jeans, for example, that has you just buy jeans from them and then you can take them back and they recycle it to a new jean for you and you just pay just like um, a little amount of money for the change. And this way, it's also kind of renewable. You can renew it whenever you want. And it's kind of based on the approach that you have, the, the vision that you want it to be. Like fast fashion doesn't really have to mean just throwing everything and wasting, but if it's done in a really proper way, as it should be, and I think it must be at this point in taking into consideration everything that is happening, just like um, once a time there was like vegetable tanning and chrome tanning, so that was also really bad for human health. And this is more or less, I think, the same approach that we should have when we consider um, this fast fashion industry in leather. Yep, I, I agree. Great, thank you. Great um, answers. It's a very like, insightful conversation about these philosophical topics, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's come back to leather design process, leather design work. Um, so Antonio, can you explain us, um, or can you explain the audience, how does the, the design process of a leather product work? Where do you start? What happens next uh, until you reach the product? I can tell you two main examples. Okay. 
The one is related to the job I do with my clients. They are the producer, they have the factory and uh, they are on the market. So I'm on the other side, uh, inside the, the company and I design for them. In that case, uh, uh, normally it works like this. Uh, during the year, we have some moment uh, that we sit around a table and we decide uh, all together, thanks to the feedback from the, from the market, what could be the next step to do, the next uh, project uh, and product to develop, okay? Normally, those moments are just after the main uh, fairs that the, the company does. For example, uh, just uh, one month and a half ago, uh, we had here in Milan the Salone del Mobile, uh, one of the main uh, um, moments for many uh, companies uh, in the field of uh, furniture. So we already had a meeting uh, planning all the new products uh, for September. September, we have another important fair in Monte Carlo, the Bot Show, and Paris as well. There is another fair, Maison Objet. Then we are already working for the Maison Objet of January. And then we have another fair uh like october in the us i don't remember the name now so it's extremely dense uh the 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 amount of job we 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 have to to do uh this is because every fair you go uh you know the buyers uh, travel all around the world if they meet you in september in a fair and they meet you in another fair in december they would love to see something different this is the thing Okay, and this uh, doesn't exactly match with my idea of durability. But the thing is that uh, I'm, uh, I'm inside this game and I have to play the rules of the game. What I try to do by myself uh, is to use as much as possible my uh, idea and attitude. So I try to design durable goods, not durable just uh, regarding the material uh, uh, is done, but also regarding uh, uh, how it looks. Okay, uh, there is a lovely thing that uh, Vico Magistretti, an Italian um, product designer, furniture designer, always says, and is uh, uh, a good design lasts a hundred years. Okay, so that is the kind of uh, sustainability I, I try to, uh, to do. If my object, uh, it will be used for the next 100 years, uh, even if uh, the consumption of energy to do it is higher than another one, but the other one, it lasts just uh, four or five years, there is no comparison between uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the consumption of energy of mine to the other ones. Okay, this is uh, what I normally try to do for my client so i try to develop uh, the project also knowing from inside the possibilities of the company um, it is extremely um, necessary in my job uh, to go uh, side by side with the client uh, i need to know exactly how the machinery works uh, how large they can cut uh, how deep they can cut, uh, how long time they need to, to glue, because I need to design according to the, the, the technologies they can use. Okay, so this is the reason why I do prefer in my approach uh, uh, a long-term relationship, because once you know uh, who is close to you very well, you have less possibility to have mistakes. Okay, right. Right. and more probability to have success. Mm -hmm. This is what I do with, uh, with my clients. Regarding my, uh, my brand of bags, uh, the attitude, uh, as I told you, was a bit different than uh, the fashion system. Uh, I'm an industrial designer, product designer. So I decided to uh, develop a brand with this touch. Okay. Uh, the keywords of this uh, were endless, uh, quality, 
and uh, uh, far away from seasonal uh, uh, touch, uh, seasonal attitude. So uh, in that moment, uh, I, I decided to start with this uh, uh, brand new company. Um, I had no money to invest uh, in a classic way. I couldn't replace uh, a Valentino bag uh, because there is a lot of people working behind. Okay. And the main cost, uh, I'm talking for Italy and Europe probably, the main cost behind the bag is the cost of the people, the craftsmanship. So I decided to do something extremely industrial, uh, a piece of leather, unique piece of leather, just cut it and then join it together. So there is no one who takes my bag under a sewing machine. And uh, this is also a way to um, show how this material is amazing, right. how this material resists. And uh, after, uh, for example, I still use the first uh, test bag and I really use it in a very bad way. Uh, it's extremely strong. The, 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 you really, I did some stress test on, on the joinery of my bag and uh, it is amazing. Okay, I, I will show you later. I, I will show you the trick of the bag because uh, uh, I have a, a couple of worldwide patents on, on the bag so I can show you the trick. But uh, this was my idea to do something industrial with the material that is to me the best. And one more thing uh, that I always uh, say to, to show how, how this material for me is important. I am vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I don't eat meat. Okay. So, uh, and the people that knows me always ask me, how can you combine those two things? Uh, uh, I, I'm not, uh, 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 that kind of vegetarian that, uh, would like all the world to be like me. Okay. Uh, my choice, uh, uh, shouldn't be the choice uh, of someone else. Uh, I just know that, uh, the, the leather is a byproduct of the world of meat. Okay. Absolutely. And, uh, for example, the, the, the supplier I have of leather is in Tuscany is a person that probably, you know, because I've seen, uh, during your travel, you have been to the tannery Volpi. Oh yeah. Uh, Giuseppe. Yeah. I know him really well. Yeah. I do buy leather from them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I've been there talking with the holder. I was saying him this, I'm vegetarian. Could you please tell me, uh, uh, assure me that uh, no one is being killed uh, just for the leather of my bag? And he told me the process. Uh, and he was like, listen to me, our leather comes from France because they are the main producer of meat. Okay. Uh, they don't get money for the leather. We pay them just for the salt and for the people uh, putting the leather on a, on a EPAL. For them, it's cheaper this than uh, trash the leather because, yeah, because it's expensive. So to me, it's a question of a high level of respect for the animals and uh, for the material. I, I need to use it. We don't have to trash that material. We need to be respectful and do our best with that material. This is perfectly okay. came out. I didn't know um, that you were a vegetarian and this is actually a great point. I'm trying to explain to people. So as you were thinking when you went to Volpi first time, some people are under the impression that animals are killed for leather or could be right. And yes, it is the case for very specific types of skins like crocodile or, or if you're talking chinchillas or like foxes for fur, those are different. Uh, just maybe one or two percent of the leather market may have these exotic leather goods. The animals are killed for leather. And yeah. I don't, you know, I, that, I'm excluding that aspect. But the majority of the leather is coming from cows, 80-85%, then the sheep, goats and pigs which is because we demand meat, a lot of people eat meat, 
it's a waste you know as yeah. Wolfie explained to you they're trying to throw this out it's a perfectly good durable resource that we can make it into leather of course it takes some energy manpower and you know industrial work to make it into a fabric but as you said it could last 100 years can you imagine how many more plastic material you need to create to replace this thing you know if you waste it totally right agree. yeah so, and and now the the sad thing is they go around with vegan leather label to sell the plastic fake leathers to the unsuspecting you know good intending people so i'm trying to make it as clear as possible especially if you're a meat eater like i am and and because of my meat demand this leather is produced automatically and it is responsible of me to choose leather whenever i can so i don't need totally. to create a demand for plastic right I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Yeah. But also because uh, uh, just a, a very stupid example, um, there is a very fa famous fashion brand uh, who doesn't use uh, anything from animals. Okay, uh, the the business they have uh, in the bags uh, is very high, and they use uh, the fake leather in few words in plastic. I perfectly remember. This friend of mine uh, who got a, a, a pochette, a, a, a clutch, very small, with this leather, with this gold uh, finish. It probably didn't last more than two, three months. On the edges, uh, it, it was totally scratched, but really neither a season. And uh, she was uh, like uh, uh, impressed about this. Uh, and uh, but why it doesn't last? Uh, it doesn't last long. Yeah, because uh, it's plastic. It doesn't last like leather. It doesn't get old like leather. Right. When leather get old, becomes uh, amazing. It's an alive material. Okay, and he paid probably for that clutch uh, something about 400, 500 euros. Uh, so uh, uh -huh. I was really shocked about this. It just yeah. went to waste. <laughs> Yeah, Total that, waste. I mean, you cannot use it because it's not repairable. Yeah, yeah, it goes to landfills, you know, and it's it's crazy. Like, and this material being marketed as vegan and sustainable, I don't think it's it's anything about truth. It's it's crazy. This is uh, I, I, now I don't want to enter into a field extremely slippery, but it's a kind of greenwashing. Okay. Uh, we should, uh, as people involved in this field, we should also say the truth to the people and to share our vision because uh, uh, it's a fact that it's much better to use real leather than to create uh, fake leather. Okay, we, you don't have to uh, uh, invest and use energy more than the, the, the one that you use for the leather. Absolutely. So, um, Helen, let me ask you about the design process. How do did we or do we go about designing a leather bag? Like, what are the steps? Um, you know, when you're working with a leather company like the guy. Okay. So, um, this it was first of all an amazing experience for me. I'm really um, thankful and grateful for it. Uh, so first, it's the sketch part, and so everybody kind of uh, has like um, everybody puts an idea on the table, and the discussion takes place. And then there's the sketching part, so the process about how it's gonna go, depending on the shape. So maybe we define a shape or um, a specific um, approach. So if we're doing bags or crossbodies or clutches, and then kind of. Um, being really simple and minimalistic all times, like really accessorizes <coughs> and really paying attention to how it's all combined together. There was a bag that we did, a kind of like a clutch uh, that we were working on. It was kind of like an envelope, so also kind of origami folding process going on. And um, it was really useful, just simple with um, really basic stitch lines and really um, long-lasting. So 
I think overall, when it comes to this, like the design part and the um, thinking process that we put inside when we come to the table is really what uh, kind of brings it all together. And then there's also the manufacturing part, which takes place afterwards. Right, the prototyping, the material uh, choice, yeah. the support structure techniques. Absolutely. And um, so what it takes to be a leather fashion designer, it could be a bag or it could be a leather item, home decor in your case, Antonio. Like what does someone need to have in terms of skill set or anybody can go into this path if, if they wanted to do like, how do they go about it? Well, uh, if you are not uh, good enough with your hands, uh, probably you cannot stay in this field because uh, uh, what I, uh, I'm used to say that uh, uh, I think with my hands, okay? So the constant practice uh, uh, of touching, uh, sewing, cutting, bending, gluing leather is fundamental because if you don't know the possibilities, then you cannot design anything uh, correct uh, and interesting, I would say also. Uh, if you want to begin uh, a career in this field, uh, probably mm, the best way is to, uh, to go to someone that can teach you something, okay? Uh, I'm always quite impressed when um, in the fashion schools, for example, in the fashion course, there is a this is normal, uh, the class regarding bags, let's design a bag. Well, it's like to have a class, let's design a car. But if you don't know the engine inside, the technology uh, from deeper, how can you arrive to a good design? Uh, it's almost impossible to me. So it would be nice to have uh, uh, a slow process that brings you to design a bag thanks uh, uh, to the to the experience you do okay it would be nice to go in a factory where they cut leather how they choose leather uh, it would be nice also to take students uh, to the tannery right okay uh, in the uh, in the first lesson i did uh, to helen uh, and to the class uh, i i i've been extremely rude i would say uh, is a is a way to shock the people and to put them in front of the reality. I was showing them uh, uh, an amazing piece of leather from Bonaudo, one of the best tannery in the world. It's soft, the touch is magic, and mm -hmm. I was showing them where this magic piece comes from. And I've been elegant with them because I said I cannot, you cannot feel the smell. Okay, the smell is terrible. And it's a dirty process at the beginning, okay? But this is important because at the end, you need to be conscious that what is in your hand, it costs pain to someone. Okay, so you have to be respectful about the material. Uh, the last step for me in the school is to use the leather. First, we prototype with paper, cardboard, whatever you want. Then we use the leather for last, okay? Um, I think I'm really grateful that I have Antonio as my teacher because I'm always really hyped for the lesson when I go and as he said the first lesson he showed us videos about um, the really basic the house the um, where was it actually it, I think it was in Tuscany uh, the place that they had all the ah. tires and they were stepping on it. It was really um, shocking to see actually the way that it was made, the salting process all through and we were also talking about the smell. I, I, I show them yeah, the, pro the moment when they open the leather yeah. and they cut it. And I say, listen to me, in this moment the leather is so heavy that three person yeah. extremely strong are necessary to lift it okay yeah. and then it's dirty you still see a bit of meat a bit of blood so it's the first step of the process if you are not strong in that moment probably uh, is not it's your, not your, a place, your business it's not a place <laughs> for everybody so i was born into it my family no is it's not Henry, 
and I have grown up in a tannery since I was eight, nine years old. I was running around, and uh, none of my friends were able to come to the tannery because they say it stinks. Like to me, it's the greatest smell of all times. Like I, you get used to it <laughs> by time, but right? again, um, a great perspective. I love the way you said it. You know, it commands respect because all that. Uh, dirty, ugly, bloody beginnings turn into this beautiful, elegant material, and it takes pain to so many people, so many hands touching it, shaping it into this, you know, durable, beautiful item. So, from that aspect alone, it's a very, you know, respectable uh, material, element, leather. Beautifully said. I, I really love it. So, um, career-wise, yeah. I would also like if someone is planning to start a career about leather, I think, as Antonio teached us, I think it's really important to know the reaction of leather. For example, I didn't know that leather could be molded with water. Um, and there's like processes that involve um, many different processes of combining, watering, kind of getting it into a shape. I think this is also really important when you start working with it so that you get to know actually what the material can do to you and how can you um, like design something out of it with the knowledge that you have uh, with the effect, you know, with the water and all the processes. Perfectly uh, important point. I get this question. I want to get into leather and I don't know where to start. They say, what kind of leather I get? Well, what do you want to do? Leather can be incredibly thin and soft that you can make even like an underwear with it or, or a napkin. Or it could be stiff as a rock you can use as a shoe sole, right? It's a huge wide world of leathers we live in. Um, you need to understand what are you going to do, what kind of leather you have with the shapes, the reactions, the banding. Uh, and then you can actually apply your design into leather. Um, that there is a good amount of beginner knowledge you need to accumulate first to start with leather design, in my opinion. Totally agree, because without experience, you cannot do a good project. If you don't know the tools, uh, the, the right thickness to use, uh, uh, if you don't know, for example, why uh, you should use a goat or sheep leather and not the cow leather, that's a mess, okay? And uh, if you, for example, need to cover something elastic and play with the elasticity of leather, you don't use a three millimeter thick, you use a goat that is elastic, uh, and my in idea at the beginning of the course was to show them all those possibilities to understand better than for their own idea which material is best. That's it. That's it. Absolutely, it is, um, it is an important aspect to get, get started if you want to do anything with leather. So. Um, you mentioned some schools. Um, definitely, probably the, e the definitely the good way to start is go someone who is doing it. You know, try to get get learning by doing it. Uh, if you want to practice by yourself, uh, get some leathers and start doing something at home. But if you have the opportunity to go to a school, what good schools are around in Europe or in your knowledge around the world that can get you started in the leather design? <laughs> Haley, want you say something? Um, I mean, for me, as far as I'm like, I'm studying at NABA for right now, uh, Nuova Academia di Belle Arti. It has uh, one in Rome and one in Milan. I am in Milan currently. Um, I'm actually really happy with my school and with the teachers that provide me um, with the knowledge that I need. Um, about everything actually, about leather, about modeling, about technical drawings and rendering. So, but if they want kind of like an online course, from what I know as a student, there is um, Udemy. Uh, it has online courses about everything that you can find, like rendering, um, all about leather, specific things of your interest, even marketing, business. 
So maybe they can check there, but other than that, as like proper schools, um, I mean, I don't really have um, specific knowledge about it. I've heard, uh, but I've never been, uh, that in Tuscany, for example, in Flores, there are um, a couple of uh, institutes, uh, they base everything on leather. So there they teach you everything from the craftsmanship to the marketing uh, uh, based on the leather. Of course, uh, the reason is uh, because uh, Flores and Tuscan in general is the kingdom in Italy for the leather. So um, it's like uh, the design uh, uh, school in Milan because design is in Milan. Uh, well, apart those two schools, uh, uh, I don't know any other specific school for leather in Italy and not in Europe as well. Uh, some course like mine, for example, is based on the leather, but it's not a complete process. Okay. Mm, I would say that uh, what we are doing uh, is a project that has to become an object, but uh, is not taking care about the marketing, uh, the, the production system. No, it's just finalized to, to create something. I see. Uh, yeah, this is kind of unfortunate that there's not many options to people to get into in this. Um, then, um, actually, I, I was going to ask something I forgot about this uh, school. Oh, the, the afterwards, the, the career path. Uh, how do you both can comment on this? How does the, the job opportunities or the career path looks like once you kind of start acquiring your skills? What can you do with it? Is it a good career path? You can make a good living out of it. What's your recommendation to people who might be considering it? Well, uh, as I told you before, uh, because of the the career I'm doing, uh, I can see that this field is extremely um, good, is extremely uh, successful if you are able to uh, stay at the top, if you are able to work uh, with a higher quality. Okay. Uh, what the, for example, the, the main problem nowadays for the companies uh, that works with leather is to find people. There is no people. Okay. Because this is not a job uh, that uh, involves just your hands. Is your hands uh, under the guide of the brain. So this is the complicated thing. If you, if you are a person with a passion, with a passion, uh, good ability, uh, you will never fail in this field and you can have a job for the rest of your life. In Italy, believe me, uh, nowadays, if you are able to use a sewing machine like that, uh, you, you get job in a second in this field. Um, in my approach, I can say that um, being outgoing is key. If um, you have a passion for something, if you want to go through it, then you should, and if you think that you have the skills and you, the knowledge background, then I think you should just go out and experiment with people and try to find possibilities and opportunities for you to stand up or even just sending some design works to, I don't know, companies that maybe are interested, that, are, that interest you, sorry. Um, so that at least when you show that effort, then there's always a um, consequence. There's always a benefit that you, come, that you can get, no matter what the field is. Uh, regarding leather, I think, um, I, of course, Antonio and you will know way better, but uh, I think it's really profitable if you use the, the system wisely, if you manage the work by, wisely, and if you use the material in an um, efficient way. There can be a really good gap to 
improvise and um, prove yourself. Also, because um, I think origami work, like paper origami, is a big thing right now. Um, and I'm starting to kind of investigate this with origami and leather, how to combine them two. Because origami is something that you do with no material uh, rather than the paper. So you don't have uh, any other gluing or sewing. So this approach is, I think, fundamental when it comes to leather working. So if you know the skills and if you have the knowledge, then you should just put it out there, I think. <laughs> I completely agree. I think it's um, it's a very uh, generous field as long as you have all the three things Antonio said, the passion, the patience, and, and your skills, the ability to work with your hands. You know, it's your brain, your heart, and, and your hands. Uh, if you feel this is a good material you enjoy working with, it could be very profitable and your last career, you know, just... Uh, and I don't feel even like I'm working. I'm I'm coming to play every day. So it's as long as you have that love for the material, I think it's a great field that will reward you. Um, and this is pretty much all the questions I had. But I would love to see your designs, Antonio. Your bags, especially the the design you mentioned that uh, the. There's no sewing machine. I'm, I'm thinking like interlocking uh, techniques you have out there. We would love to see. Maybe you explain a little bit, show the audience. Okay. What you're okay. Working on. I just take uh, a sample. I use a sample in the studio. I show you first uh, how the bag look like. The one I'm gonna show you is made with the nub leather. That is uh, the natural one. Okay. Uh, is a risk I took in my, in my collection. I have uh, colors. One is this. Uh, the risk is because uh, this leather is extremely uh, sensible. Uh, it change uh, um, with the rain, with the sun, uh, with the use. It change a lot. Uh, this was a sort of way to me to declare. Uh, how much I love this material, even when it gets old. So, this uh, is the bag. It's a rectangular shape. No more than this. We, uh, I show you this because when I say to you uh, that uh, I wanted to escape the seasonal uh, approach of the fashion, uh, so uh, I was looking for a shape uh, with no time. Okay, so a geometric shape like this uh, allow me to do this. Uh, other specific things about this is that, as you can see, this is the point where all the bag uh, close. Okay, and from top uh, you have uh, two flaps uh, like this. Uh, you open it, uh, you have another flap. Uh, here is my logo because I'm shy and I don't want to uh, to play that sort of uh, um, game where the winner is the one that put the biggest logo. Okay, we call it logo mania. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not in that field. I hate logos. Uh, neither my T-shirt has a logo. Then you open it and. Uh, I show you, here is the secret, is the interlocking system, okay? So, this kind of uh, solution at the top uh, is also to avoid teeth in the underground. They cannot put the hand inside, they have to go on back and then inside, so it's quite complicated, okay, to steal anything from this backpack. Everything is from a single piece of leather. I show you the piece of leather. Uh, look at this. This, uh, few years ago, it was uh, impossible to be produced with uh, uh, the technology of the, of the blade. Okay, the, the, the geometry was too complicated and too expensive as well. This is possible just because nowadays uh, the technology is a CNC machine. 
is a cutter with an ultrasonic uh, uh, movement up and down that can cut very small geometries. And also the positive in this new technology is that the prototyping is the same of the production with the same machine is extremely fast and flexible. So this allow me to take one ladder and to obtain three backpacks. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, this is quite uh, impressive. Like one piece of leather, I love it. You know, it just shows the the beauty of leather. There is no seams or other disturbance. It emphasizes the leather, and that clever interlocking. I've I've seen it in um, maybe a couple of Pinterest stuff. Similar interlocking technologies, like not not quite like this, but as you said, it's very intricate. Probably the CNC made it available. I know the oscillating um, machines. They're pretty. Advanced. Yeah, but well, you know, I'm from uh, uh, the industrial design. I'm perfectly conscious that uh, nobody invent anything anymore. Uh, I ju we all just uh, apply our knowledge in a different way. Uh, I I could do two worldwide patent on this bag. Uh, I've been followed by a very a famous uh, studio here in Milan that. Uh, uh, follows all the best uh, fashion brands because this interlocking system in this way for a bag like this is never been used before. Okay, uh, I was telling you before that uh, this interlocking system, if you take two bags and you connect them, you try to pull it, uh, or you are uh, the incredible Hulk, or you don't you don't destroy it. Okay, and uh, um, I, I also love. Uh, how this bag gets old is not uh, uh, something that uh, erase quality but had quality to me. And this is this bag is possible because I I, I choose the right leather. The Volpi tannery leather is the perfect one uh, because the tannery is not dry. It is uh, uh, is soft enough to allow me to open and close. Uh, thousand and thousand of time this bag okay this uh, wouldn't be possible with uh, a fake leather o of course uh, it could destroy after one month that you open and close but leather is different leather is magic for this uh, so the trick uh. absolutely There's, um well it's vegetable tanned as volpi makes vegetable tan there and i can tell the, the stiffness of the leather so it's a great balance that you can get from the material, which is not possible with plastic. And um, as you said, because of the vegetable tanness of it, they they will age gracefully. They will get darker, shinier, develop a patina as you use them. So I don't think you can destroy that bag. Like that's that's one of the designs that's gonna last hundred years if somebody want to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with this. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And also, the collection is not just the design uh, since the beginning uh, had the intention to develop a family of bags. Okay, so the flexibility of the system uh, it was fundamental for me. Thanks, thanks to the same uh, approach and idea, uh, I could design, for example, a travel bag like this. This is a, the 24 hour one. Uh, is the one. This is not mine, it's for a client, but I'm used to use a bag like this uh, when I travel two, three days, it's perfect. And uh, this, uh, for example, is the flat of the hip pack. Very small, okay. And uh, uh, is a, it's a shame that uh, from the video you cannot touch but the inside of this leather is a uh, is sanded and also because to me it's important that uh, you you experience this bag also with your with your fingers with your hands when you touch the inside and it is something that uh, happen every time you open it uh, 
uh, you feel a, a different touch okay so once again i pattern this system and according to the necessities i can uh, uh, produce many pieces for example the other positive of the technology and uh, and the design of this bag uh, is that very often the people ask me specific geometries they have a computer uh, large like that and tall like that or uh, uh, i had a client uh, who is a photographer he came in the studio with his uh, camera uh, an amazing camera Hasselblad, the cost of the camera was like a, a, a car and he was asking me to design a bag for the camera and so I had to take the measures and thanks to the design, uh, uh, 3D design, I could cut uh, something specific for that necessity but this happened quite often and I can do it because uh, the technology nowadays allow me to do it Okay. Yeah, this this is really flexible because of the joinery system. I think you just change the dimensions and make your recalculations, and you don't have yeah. to wait for making knives or anything because it's CNC. Your three D design just gets cut precisely. You can make pretty, um, you know, feasible custom pieces, uh, you know, which wasn't possible before. Yeah, but in the same moment. Uh... I go in production on the same piece of leather. I can cut three backpacks, uh, all different. Uh, but even if the difference is uh, one centimeter, two centimeter, I can do it. It is something that uh, uh, doesn't uh, probably sound so uh, incredible, but it is. Okay, nowadays really, uh, we are able to be flexible also in this way. And this is a plus uh, on the market because uh, I can really gives you, give you uh, something unique and specific for your needs. Because generally when you buy something, it generally comes with three packs, either it's small, medium or big. So if you have the ability to actually control what's going on, then it can be suitable, I don't know, for the size of your computer or like, yeah, custom things. It's really cool, I think. <laughs> The, the people need uh, customized thing more and more. Uh, a client from, uh, I don't remember where, where uh, he was asking me uh, a specific pocket inside for a specific dimension of a computer. So I did uh, the, the paper, okay. I prepared this, uh, the pocket. I sent the pocket to him and after the test, I could go ahead in closing the, the backpack. And I, I, I'm sure that this person will love this backpack for the rest of his life. It's not an easy shopping. You're not going to uh, somewhere in the street buy uh, a backpack. You're asking someone. You wait for that person to send you the test. You try and then I do assemble the bag. So it's a long process that in this time you really fall in love more and more. It is, it is special, it's bespoke and there is a big growing demand for it. I keep getting uh, emails every day uh, asking for custom pieces. Um, we're trying to do some of it, not all of course, but this is a great thing. So where do people find you antonio where can they see your products or reach out to you for a custom project obviously you are a, a great designer and your bags are unique <laughs> i'm sure some people will uh, be interested in so i would love to always give um give them a way to reach out to you social media website no yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i uh i want to be extremely honest uh, in replying to you now um my activity is based on the studio, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm not totally uh, concentrate on the bag field. Uh, this means that uh, as a product designer, I arrive to the product in the best way. Then there is all that part after the product that is how to sell it, the marketing, uh, uh, follow the production, that is uh, uh, quite complicated. 
Okay, so the volume of business I do in this uh, bag collection, uh, I would say is quite small, so it's not my main uh, uh, job. Uh, but also I don't invest too much to don't raise attention to the studio, so uh, I need to balance. This is my, uh, this collection of bag is my secret dream. I totally love it. So I, I work in this uh, when I find the right people, I always, uh, when someone bribe me, I always say, pay attention. The philosophy behind this brand is this and this and this. Would you accept or not? Because if you are looking for a Louis Vuitton, uh, a Celine, it's not me. I I'm someone else, totally different. Okay. If you want to find me, the people normally write me on, a, on, a, on the mail or on Instagram. Uh, and I'm on uh, a shop, Italian uh, shop online called Artemest that is pretty famous for the Italian, Italian craftsmanship. Uh, most of the clients uh, are from US. They, they probably look for Italian genuine leather in a customized way. Absolutely. Uh, the price signals the quality and a lot of things with it. Um... And a lot of people take price as the only signal of the quality. That's why when they spend $3,000 for a Louis Vuitton bag, they think it's the best leather or best bag. Uh, and when they see your bag next to it for 500 euros, they'll be like, oh, maybe it's not as good. But I know from the leather comparisons, I know the leather you use, I know the leather they use. I prefer the leathers you use uh, in a heartbeat and to me they're more expensive they're much more difficult to make and they they age gracefully they don't fall apart so um, absolutely I think the price is very fair for what you're showing the size of the bag and the leathers you're using so of course um, good leather is not cheap but it's it's never that expensive either yeah 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 but I, I mean cannot be cheap. Uh, I, I just use Italian leather and everything in this bag, the metal part, uh, uh, the stripes, uh, they're all made in Italy. The, the metal is not, is brass, for example. And uh, the galvanic, the finishing uh, is uh, from a factory uh, that I know they don't use chrome. So everything uh, uh, is done with a specific philosophy. Okay, this is my dream. I don't want this dream to be destroyed by uh, a bad detail. Everything has to be perfect in this. Awesome. Okay. This, that's it. Yeah, this is your baby. This is your very special project yeah, exactly. on the side. Absolutely. Awesome. We'll make sure to add your uh, Instagram handles on the screen for people to follow you. If anybody wants to reach out to Antonio or Helen, uh, you let me know. I, I can put you guys in contact. Any design, whether design related matters. Um, well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed the conversation here, uh, the insights, answers you both gave. <laughs>